Hey gang, it's your girl Old Father Thames here. Let's just get stuck straight in and see if we can find anything fantastic out there today. Right gang, let's see what we can find. That is an Irish penny. You can just make out the heart there. Um, and on the back, there should be some kind of bird, I think. Chunky bedware. Glaze, I love it when it's been tumbled and rolled about and there are these strips left on. cut glass diamante thing I just spotted this gorgeous bit of slipware. Look at the glaze on that. So you can see it's slip decorated before firing. It's had coloured slip trailed across it. And the glaze is just... The patina on the glaze is just beautiful. This is a definite keeper for me. I absolutely adore this piece. I just wanted to try and show you just how many things there are on the four shelves. Um, obviously this was a huge industry and a way of Fastening clothes, ruffs, uh, dresses, obviously buttons have been around but we used to use a hell of a lot of pins. Check out the Thames gilding on this pin. You would think it is gold, wouldn't you? But that is just what the pins come out like from the anaerobic Thames mud. Just with this lovely, what we call Thames gilding. Not gold. Certainly looks like it, but it's not. So I'm sticking to this area for a while because it's just lovely to concentrate on an area that's so full of lead items, um, brass items, got coin things, coin-like things. Um, the idea being things of the same shape and size might be hanging out near to each other. I've just turned out this chunky old pulley. Um, it's made of wood. And it's a 
great big bolt going through it. So that would have been a pulley for some kind of pulley system. I've got a few of these at home. Uh, I don't know, I'm tempted to take this one, but perhaps I'll just leave it. rather a bad habit of taking bricks home with me, much to the chagrin of my better half. This is lovely, but I'm going to leave it here. I just wanted you to see it. Look at all these stabbing marks. It's stuck. wedged firmly in between this flint here and this chalk I've managed to get some of the mud out under there I'm just trying to get the best position so you can see this same time as I see it okay let's see that's the key I'm saying key I'm hoping Ready? That's in great shape though. That's a 
piece of anti-aircraft missile timer there and there's the broadhead stamp broadhead arrow so that would have been fired up into the sky to defend London World War II isn't that fantastic just picked up this musket ball what a weight to it listen maybe you can't hear but lead musket ball not necessarily fired from a musket could have been from a different gun of the period but uh, love it so we found that anti-aircraft fragment anti-aircraft missile fragment and we found this musket ball which looks as if possibly was fired and hit something Hopefully we'll see some more details on that when it's dried up a bit. Looks like there's something on there. I might be able to make that out. There we go. Bag seal. I just flipped this piece of pottery over. It's a base of... Maybe it's not a base, but anyway, it's a piece of pottery. It might be a lid. In fact, I think it's a lid. For a big vessel. I flipped it over and I found all this speckling and it's just got such a beautiful patina that I felt I should show you. Look at that, like a speckled egg. Could be a keeper, garden keeper. Yeah, I can go in the garden. I've just found this enormous mooring ring which would have been in a block of concrete and embedded into the foreshore and then this tiny piece here, I think it's probably some metalware I've got a bit of transfer printed, blue and white not much to it, I'll leave this behind for someone else still rather sweet I know you guys are a bit fascinated with these and you might want to see some in um, So, there you are. A little Thames garnet. Here's another. So, these are garnets, the Thames mystery as to why they are here. Lots of different reasons. People say they were used or they were used as a an abrasive material, polishing, grinding. Oh, another one. Um, uh, you know, some people said they came across as ballast in ships. There are various stories about the Thames garnets. There's another. They are really lovely things. Obviously, they can be semi precious stones, but they there are, I believe, different. Um, Raised different qualities of garnet. Here's another super metal foreshore. Loads of modern metal stuff here. So I tend to just pass on by. But you never know, you could find something anywhere.
that's an interesting thing. With a hole in there. Hmm. Could be a little weight of some sort. Cute lead. And the hole's been purposely made there, so I think it's probably a little trade weight of some kind. Rudimentary weight. Lots and lots of typeface in this area. Here's a little letter. Oh, an L. I think that is an L. There's a nice brightly coloured piece of modern tile. It's a really sweet colour on there. Very gloopy metal, you can see. Rather so in just to sleep, we have another piece of the tile. How lovely, I wonder if this has got any more clues on the back. Nope. This one you can make out the little ridges there, clearly a tile, but we'll do some research on that when we get back. That is what's known as a lace shape, sometimes an aglet, you can see the seam there, and what that is, is a tie for the end of uh, laces, as in laces to fasten up clothes or shoes or and it's like the ones we have now that are plastic and they just go on the end of our laces. So you can feed the lace through an eye and do up whatever you're doing up. This is probably from a shirt or maybe shirt sleeve. That's got a acanthus leaf, I think, on it there. Again, that's transfer wear. Pop that back. This is an exciting find. That's a little hammered coin. And it's pierced. For some reason, I wonder if someone was going to wear it. I'm not sure, but um, I'll look at that when I get home. I'll look in my coin book and see what that is, but that is a lovely little hammered coin. I'm really pleased with that. All right, so going this way, I'm crossing the old brick highway and getting down to a different stretch of foreshore. In amongst the huge swathe of bricks on this bit of foreshore, found a teeny piece of blue and white willow pattern that's transfer printed. You can't get away from this stuff, it's everywhere. I believe it first came about in the late 18th century, and as it became more and more popular, well, I'm sure everyone has someone in their family that's got a set of this stuff. Ah, that looks like a handle to me. Lovely glaze in there. Yeah, handle of some kind of vessel. 
first medieval. What a super blaze. I shall leave that for someone else to find. In terms of questions that I am always asked. Why are there so many teeth and bones on the floor chalk? The simple answer is that uh, it's a, it was a rubbish dump for hundreds of years. Not only was human evacuations <laughs> uh, chucked out into the Thames, not least with Bazalgette's sewer system, a revolutionary sewer system, but uh, in chain pots and what have you. Here, this is a very old bone that's been butchered. You can see the cut mark there. Um, you can tell that it's really old because of how dark it is. It's been down in the mud for a long time and it's just eroded out. But all the um, hostelries, chop houses, restaurants that backed onto the Thames just tip their bones out into the river after they've been butchered. I turn up loads of pieces of brass like this copper in the hope that there will be something imprinted on it. And L W something. L W R L W I Company Limited. So it might have been on some goods that was being delivered somewhere. T W L Co Limited 13. And it's got two little holes there so it obviously fastened on something, some sort of tag, but I love that. There's a tiny fly button. Does it have any details on it? It does. I think That might be a bit of an edge or our own brand job. Mm, maybe not. I shall again have a look at that when I get home. Sweet thing. I've just spotted a pipe, but whether the bowl is going to be on there, we shall see. lead shot. Nice and heavy. Can't see the casting. Oh, there it is. There's the casting sprue. So I'll be taking that home with me too. Yet more lead shot here. Little one. Two little ones. Very heavy. This looks like the bottom of an 18th century apothecary bottle. You can see the bubbles and the glass there. And a pontil, I believe, well I will check this out because I'm not too hot on glass, but definitely has some age to it. You can see the wavy lines. And that leftover bit there. I think that's from making a pontil mark, but uh, I'll check it out when I'm home. Tin glaze pottery. And I think it might be part of the candlestick. I can't resist a piece of tin glaze, so I'm going to take that home. It's a very fragile glaze here. 
and where's a way of And you can see some cutting in there. But I'm going to take that one with me. I don't know. Feels like it's going on. Oh, no, hang on. I've worked this down a little more. I still can't work out what it is. It's a mystery. I'm sure people are screaming at the screen and they know what it is, but to me that's a mystery. I'll have to ask one of my very learned friends. This just popped up. Could be nothing, of course. It could be have a mark or something on it. An EPS electroplated nickel silver. But clean that up and we'll find out. This is a loop twist. Some people say use a cheap fastener. Others, including myself, say it was for measuring out bundles of pins. Uh, they used to come in, I think, batches of a hundred different size loops for different size bundles and different size pins. Anyway, good sign. Now, I've just found this nice little thing here, which I thought looked like an 18th century bag seal. You can see a mold mark on the back. Um, I'm not too sure about that. It's very sweet though. And by the font, it does look like 18th. So that's quite a nice thing. I'll have to do a little research of that. And another thing in my favourite little spot, I've got the little annular button. of ten days never to be left. Ooh, something on the back too. So pretty. nice piece of Staffordshire combed slipwear here and if I'm not mistaken another two pieces of slip comb and I love the way they look like little biscuit pieces the decoration here this is slip that's been put on and trailed with an implement dragged back to create these patterns here as well. You can see it the line there it forms into a zigzag. Very pretty stuff. That's all for now folks. Join me again on another mudlarking adventure soon. Thanks for watching.